Happy New Year. AT&T welcomes you to great American holiday tradition, the AT&T Cotton Bowl on Fox. Enjoy the game. Thank you, Jose Gutierrez, and welcome back to the Cotton Bowl. At this time, let's join public address announcer Bill Melton. Ladies and gentlemen, now at midfield for today's coin toss are the team captains for Auburn University and the University of Nebraska, along with Jose Gutierrez representing AT&T. Cotton Bowl Athletic Association Chairman Bruce Gadd and other Cotton Bowl Athletic Association officers. The referee for today's 71st AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic is Todd Gearlings from the Big Ten Conference. And now let's welcome in the third member of our crew down on the sideline is Krista Voda. Good job, buddy. Way to go, man. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We had a little technical problem with uh, our communications with Krista, but we'll be back to her. Nebraska Cornhuskers coached by Bill Callahan. He had a Super Bowl champion not too long ago with the Oakland Raiders. But he loves the college game. It's been a long time at Wisconsin with Barry Alvarez there as the offensive line coach. Came with Ray Rhodes to the Philadelphia Eagles. Left with John Gruden to go to the Oakland Raiders and took a team to a Super Bowl. This Auburn team, Pat, yep. the senior class has won 40 games, trying to go for their 41st win, and that's unmatched in when Auburn you, history. That's pretty remarkable when you think about that. Yeah. Auburn won the toss and deferred. So Nebraska will be on offense first. There's quite a bit of wind on the field, which you obviously can't tell from our picture, but that'll be a factor. And it's cold. They we were down on the field just a moment ago, and Tommy Tuberville came over to talk to us and said, I said, how you feeling, Coach? He said, I'm cold. We haven't had a cold game all year long. We got one today. Clark's kickoff. Sails out of the end zone, so Nebraska will take over at the 20. Zach Taylor is their quarterback, and we watched him in practice. And he he knows how to throw. He's a good, good passer. And he's absorbed a lot of this offense. Bill Callahan told us that he didn't have a quarterback in professional football that could take on as much information as he can and spit it out. He's uh, extremely impressed by the mental part of what he can do of all things he's from Norman Oklahoma <laughs> overlooked I guess you had to say by the Sooners <laughs> nothing on first down the Auburn defense has been and is very quick particularly the linebackers here's the offensive line big as you would expect Patrick Murtha, the two tackles. Andy Christensen, one guard. Mike Huff, the other. The 
The backs and receivers, Dane Todd, the academic All-American. Brandon Jackson starts at tailback. Marlon Lucky, I beg your pardon, starts at tailback. For Jackson, had been scheduled, but here's a look at that Auburn defense. Pretty much standard, the defensive line, a front four. They play the 4-3. Three. The three linebackers are very, very mobile. Merrill Johnson, Will Herring will keep an eye on him. And the secondary, David Irons, brother of Kenny Irons, the running back, one of the cornerbacks. Nebraska, back to throw it. Pass complete. Purify. Purify makes the reception on the pass from Zach Taylor. Nine yard pickup, a yard short. Classic West Megan Coast. Martin. That's a first down. Yeah, yeah, the classic West Coast slant right there to Purify. Little three yard route, but got inside the defender, and Nebraska gets that first down. And they hang on to the ball and, you know, try to get in a little rhythm now. Lucky. Better than lucky. You know, this Nebraska program had the lifeblood of all these teams is recruiting. That Marlon Lucky is from Hollywood, California. Right. I was talking to Bill Callahan about him before the game. I said, how'd you get him out of there? They said they wanted to get him away from the bad elements of the neighborhood, get him out in the cornfields of Nebraska. And uh, he's earned his starting spot here today. Got the first down. Needed about a yard, they got more. You know, one thing that we talked to both coaches about, Pat, you know, the Auburn hasn't played a football game in six weeks. Bill Callahan's team hasn't played since the Big 12 championship game. So how do you how do you stay sharp if you haven't been playing games? And heck, we watched both these teams in practice, live scrimmaging, hitting. Uh, they've been going at it between each other now for two weeks after the exams, trying to stay sharp. Both of them very upbeat practices. A lot of uh, a lot of contact, as you mentioned, and a lot of quickness. The balls don't touch the ground very much. No. Nebraska's been able to move so far. Thomas swings it outside, and he's got some room. This is Lucky. And Lucky is better than that. Into Auburn territory across the 35, an 18-yard pickup. Well, watch right here. Here's the key guy for Auburn, Marquise Groves. And they, they really throw it right over him. He blitzes from the outside. They read it. Zach Taylor gets rid of the ball on timing. Just get the ball out to your athletes. Get, get the ball out into the hands of a guy like Marlon Lucky. Let him, what he, let him do what he does best there. Get rid of the ball quickly. Three steps, this ball is out in this offense. The eye back is Lucky again. That's a little bit of a surprise that he started. And he gets another carry and gets some Not more that yards. One. Patrick Lee made the stop. Well, I think one of the reasons why Marlon Lucky is out there, you know, is that Jackson, Marlon Jackson, broke his hand in the last game. He broke his right hand in the Big 12 championship game right. and a loss to Oklahoma. He says the hand is fine. But I think that, uh, you know, first drive, you want to get the, the ball in a guy that's really sure-handed. You don't want any kind of turnovers to start a game. Still lucky. Let's see if he is. About three, right side. Stopped by Merrill Johnson. Uh, we were talking to a bunch of the Nebraska players in practice the other day, and you mentioned that, you know, you used to see Nebraska just run the football. They still have the corn-fed kids there that live in the weight room, you know, that build themselves up, build their bodies up. They, that's what their line is, and that's what this offensive line is doing right now, taking control. Purify again. Flag on the play. The officials for today's game are from the Big Ten. Office. 
interference. The preliminary call. Offensive interference. The purifier's big. He's, yeah. he's six foot four, 215 pounds. And both the Auburn cornerbacks are kind of on the smaller side, smaller than he, certainly. Oh, yeah, there's a big height advantage on the outside. Yeah. Lee getting a start today five for five, Auburn. Patrick Lee, a junior. They started him today. He's six foot tall. He's their tallest cornerback, but still four or five it's inches shorter than Purify. Still lucky will be the deep back. And Todd, the fullback with him. Zach Taylor drops back in the shotgun. Shuttle pass to Lucky. Good call, good play, good result. Down inside the 30 to about the 26. Very good call, Pat. Well, that's the type of situation where Auburn was coming after. They spread him out. Just a little shovel pass. This is the type of play you never seen Nebraska run under Tom Osborne or Frank Solich for years. 19-yard pickup. And another big red first down. See the motion and shifting every play before the snap. Lucky again. Lockers in front. No, Pat, the, when Bill Callahan came to Nebraska, he didn't have instant success. He had a team that was an option team, I option team, and they, they liked to run the football, and he didn't have the type of players that were used to throwing it and catching it. And he caught a lot of grief his first year at Nebraska, yes, saying, what are, what are you doing running the West Coast offense in Lincoln, Nebraska? But uh, Bill is steadfast in his belief about how to run a program, how to run an offense, and I think the fans in Lincoln and the Nebraska nation are catching on. Moreover, his recruiting is starting to grab hold now. The it's people gone. he recruited. Todd Peterson. This Zach Taylor is a good story. Though. Yes, he is. Now, this, this Zach Taylor was recruited out of Norman, Oklahoma, to go to Wake Forest. Nobody really came after me. He was a red shirt there. Freshman year, didn't play. Transferred to Butler Community College in El Diablo, Kansas. Played in there a year there. Callahan was looking for a quarterback. Went to the junior college ranks. And it couldn't have worked out any better for Zach Taylor. And he would tell you, the, the way it's worked out, three colleges for his five years, this is the best it could have been. And he said, frankly, he was not recruited at Oklahoma. He only weighed about 165 pounds when that recruiting time came. Our first down line is brought to you by AT&T. Been a sponsor here for this Cotton Bowl yeah. game with Fox for the 11th straight season now. They have delivered. <laughs> they do, don't they? Yeah. Third and seven. Then 11 plays in this drive. Lucky has touched the ball nine of the 11. Dane Todd standing back next to Zach Taylor in the shotgun. Terrence Nunn, the wide receiver. That's a pinpoint pass. Watch this round. When you see the sticks there at the yellow line, it goes right to the yellow line, and the ball is delivered on timing. Now, we were watching practice at Texas Stadium, watching this Nebraska team play the other day, and I never saw a quarterback throw more passes in practice than Zach Taylor did. I mean, he must have thrown 200 passes We asked him. Ask him after. How many passes did he throw? And he said, I don't, I don't really know. Four, five hundred. <laughs> Marlon Lucky again. About the 10-yard line, just inside the 10. Pickup of six. Well, you, you know, you mentioned that when Zach Taylor was coming out in Norman, Oklahoma, he was about 160 pounds. Nobody recruited him. But the best way for a quarterback to strengthen his arm is actually to throw the ball. And the more he throws it, the stronger his arm gets. And that's what he said. 
So my arm used to get tired. No more. Here's lucky again. Loss. Back to about the 12. It's a good looking drive by Nebraska to start this game. Well, it's good balance right now. Yeah. You know, Zach Taylor has been accurate when he's had to throw it, but Lucky has been controlling the line of scrimmage. Will Herring made the stop, and we'll be mentioning that name a lot. Will Herring is starting his 49th game for Auburn. Never missed a game. Dane Todd, the fullback, is back alongside Zach Taylor, who's going to throw it. Touchdown. Nate Swift, the wide receiver, brings it in. Good throw from Zach Taylor, and this Nebraska team, any indication that they might not have taken this seriously, you can forget about that. Not just that, Matt, but they came out super sharp. Nate Swift on the outside here runs a little crossing route to purify and frees him up. Extra point by Jordan Congdon. And it's 7-0 Nebraska. Nebraska seven. Pretty impressive drive. 7 minutes 37 left to play in the first quarter. Back at the Cotton Bowl, Pat Summerall with Brian Baldinger. 15 plays, 80 yards. They kept the ball 7 minutes, 23 seconds. A sharp-looking drive. That's the eighth time this year that Nebraska has scored with the opening drive. So they've been effective before. That's the wind you're talking about right there, Pat, blowing the ball right yeah. off the tee. That wind didn't bother Zach Taylor in that passing game in Nebraska's at all. Jordan Congdon. Back deep is Tristan Davis. Short kick. Free Bad ball. Kick. Free ball, yes. And a scramble. I don't know if that was on purpose or not. Well, it hit it. But it was spot. effective. Yeah. yeah. Take a look at this protection that Zach Taylor had to throw. Albert came with the blitz, but they wadded them all up in there. And everybody just kind of, all those red shirts just banded together, built a pretty good fence up front. <laughs> Callahan has a good yeah, reaction, yeah. so does Zach Taylor. Yeah, that's, that's how you want to start a bowl game. Auburn will start from about their own 21. Irons the deep back, and he gets the carry. Brandon Cox is the quarterback for the Auburn Tigers. 61% of his passes complete this year. Over 2,000 yards at junior. He's been bothered by health problems, but now things seem to have gotten back together, and he said he feels good. Short game for Irons. Got a couple. Second and eight. Got more than a couple this time. Kenny Irons still on his feet outside the 35. That's typical of an Irons run. Here's the offensive line for the Auburn Tigers. Ben Grubbs, the stalwart of that group. King Dunlap. The tackle is 6'9 and a half. <laughs> Easy to pick out. The backs and receivers. Kenny Irons, the tailback. Courtney Taylor. First down Auburn. 14-yard run by Kenny Irons. And he'll get it again. And fake go, it. Go, go. This is incomplete pass. That was Ford. For Nebraska, the defensive unit headed by the two ends, Jay Moore and Adam Carricker. They both hope to play some more after the college days are over. The linebackers. Bo Rude's name will be mentioning throughout the afternoon and the secondary. Irons deep and way deep. A 
No place to go for Kenny Iron. That Nebraska defense big and strong. Led by those two defensive ends. Yeah, Stuart Bradley had tied for the league, uh, their team lead in tackles, but yeah, those guys, Carriker and Moore, we met with them after practice the other day and real enjoyable talking to them. They're both born in Nebraska, grew up Nebraska fans, and they couldn't wait to get to the weight room. <laughs> right. they, they weren't going to break the date with the weight room even during the bowl. They were working out at Texas Stadium. There is no weight room there. They had to go to a local high school. They found it. Yes, they did. Brandon Cox is swarmed under. Hit first by the cornerback on a blitz. Taken down by Carriker. One of those two defensive ends we talked about. Watch this. Here's Carriker here. He's going to run a stunt. Coming around the outside. He gets freed. And there's no getting away from Adam Carriker. He rolled up his sleeves the other day, and there's just a <laughs> slab of meat there. It just yeah. hit his all beef. I don't know if he rolled them up or they wouldn't stay down. That's what I think that's what it was. Yeah. Good punt. I mean, this is a dandy. Rigsby on the return breaks one tackle and another. And a good return by Grigsby up to the 38-yard line. All Nebraska so far. 24-yard return. After an excellent punt. 7 nothing. Nebraska leads and Bill Callahan's pretty happy about that. Back at the 71st Cotton Bowl. Pat Summerall with Brian Baldinger. Nebraska leading Auburn 7 nothing. 449 left to play in the first quarter. And Nebraska has owned this game so far. Nebraska does something coming off of timeouts when they just line up and they go run a play. They don't huddle up coming off the sideline. Marlon Lucky is still the tailback behind Zach Taylor. And Lucky gets the carry. And again, he gets good yardage. Marks the defensive tackle. The defensive coordinator of Auburn is Will Musham. And he came from the Miami Dolphins. He was with Nick Saban last year. But prior to that, he was with Nick Saban at LSU. Helped them win a national championship a couple of years back. And he runs kind of a pro-style defense. They can run a 3-4 front, three down defensive linemen, four linebackers. Or four defensive linemen, three linebackers. There are multiple. Nebraska doesn't seem to be having any problem with whatever they're doing. No, right they now. don't. They've got things pretty old figured out. Lucky again. And again, good yardage. First down, Nebraska across midfield. That, now, we're, we're seven stories up here at the Cotton Bowl. We're about as high up as you can get. But you can see those holes yeah. from up here just form. Watch it right off to the left side here. Aaron Savage made the tackle. Yeah, I mean, look at that hole. I mean, he, nobody got a hand on him until he was 10 yards down the field. has been very effective so far. Here is Taylor back to throw again. Had to run, finds a man, gets his pullback game tied. 4 yard pickup. Todd won't carry the ball very much. Doesn't have to. Or catch many passes. Now he's a fullback. He's right. a classic fullback. And we were at the Cotton Bowl luncheon yeah. on Saturday, Pat, and I got a chance to sit next to him. He's also their scholar athlete at Nebraska. What is he studying? He studies biology. Pre-med students already taken his and medical school well, exam. <laughs> yeah, never got a B or anything like that at Nebraska. Here's Lucky. Pitch back to Marlon Lucky. Dee Dee made the stop. Number 21. Watch Dane Todd here stop. lead the way on the outside. There are two back offense. He has no net. There's no, no. neck in the tank tied, right? Third down. Three. And he's just muscle on top of muscle. Smart, though. 
perfect 4.0 grade point average. There's a good lesson right there. When you pick out somebody, you're going to block throw at him. Yeah. Go ahead and commit yourself, as he did. He's the lone setback this time. Go! Out quick. Intercepted by Auburn's. Dede down the sideline. Dede could go all the way. Tripped up from behind. Karibi Dede. 53 yards on the return. The ricochet interception. What do they say, Pat, about throwing the ball? There's three things that can happen, and yep. two of them are bad, and that was one of them. The ball gets tipped like this. That was David Irons that tipped it. He was the cornerback. The brother of Kenny Irons, and Creepy D-Day was the benefactor. Now he's looking for a convoy to pick up. That would have been a very hard pass to catch. Yeah. In any case. Ooh. Coming back toward the quarterback and thrown maybe too hard. I, that's hard to say. But the ricochet landed in the enemy's hand. First down, Auburn. Here's Irons. Nothing to it. Line of scrimmage, no more. Daganduro. His Auburn team beat Florida, who's playing in the national championship game, and they won on big plays. They blocked the punt for a touchdown. So when you have speed and you have athletes, you create big plays. And that's what Auburn has been able to do this year in some big wins. They've had a great history of outstanding running backs as well. Ooh. Fake this time. Irons. The pass to Carl Stewart, the fullback. And this game is about to be tied. Well done. Pretty play. Really great play action fake. Got Brandon Cox, who's a southpaw, left-hander. Right. Going to his left. Well designed. They fake to Irons and through to Stewart. the extra point John Vaughn and we have a tie 7-7 seven, seven. the end of the first quarter 56 seconds left and it's Auburn 7 Nebraska 7 Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Back at the Cotton Bowl, it's Auburn 7, Nebraska 7. Auburn scoring drive after that pass interception by Didi, which was 52 yards officially, which is the fourth longest in Cotton Bowl history. A ricochet. Forget about that one. You make a lot of friends on the kickoff team when you do that as a kicker. They do. Let's go down to Kristen Bowden. Guys, I talked to Coach Callahan before the game. I said, how do you counter with an Auburn team that is so fast, so physical? He said, we need to be just as physical. Our offense needs to look those big old Auburn boys square in the eye and attack, attack, attack. That's obviously what they did on that first play scoring. The Auburn defense has come back and scored. Coach Callahan said he knew the momentum was going to shift in this game. They have to adjust and keep their rhythm throughout, guys. Thank you, Krista. We'll be back to you. That's another big hole for Marlon Lucky. And as Brian was pointing out on the last drive, the last time they had the ball, you can see him, really see him from up here. Well, Bill Callahan's had some big shoes to fill. I mean, Pat, I know you're friends with Tom Osborne. Right. Won a lot of championships, three championships in four years in the 90s. Big shoes to fill, big expectations with Big Red. Again, the big, the big That's 10 the the first quarter. furnished the officials, and he just signaled that this is the end of the first quarter. 
seven seven tie just about what we expected not like we expected but that's where we are the AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is sponsored by the new AT&T your world delivered by Blockbuster Total Access now offering movies through the mail plus movies through the store by Circuit City for the hottest new technology think Circuit City just what I needed and by Taco Bell official fan of college bowl action exactly one half century ago here at the Cotton Bowl Syracuse hooked up with TCU it was the national television debut of the great Jim Brown. It is off the Brown, and Brown is over for a touchdown. Brown almost single-handedly lifted the Orange men to victory, kicking three extra points, scoring three rushing touchdowns, and returning kicks. However, his team fell one point short. Still, his performance as the game's outstanding offensive player foreshadowed what would be an even greater NFL career with the Cleveland Browns. Back at the 71st Cotton Bowl. Tie score, 7-7. Seven, seven. Nebraska with the ball. They've changed directions. Nebraska should have the wind, what there is of it, at their back. A crisp, cool, perfect day in Dallas. Marlon Lucky. Now, uh, you'd like to be part of the tradition, Brian. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Uh, Matt, I've never seen anything like this before. As a cornerback, Courtney Grisby jumping on into the huddle. Look at uh, no, Nebraska. He stays up there. Yeah, I mean that's that's all that beef. That's that just no. that Nebraska corn-fed beef beef in the middle there. Nobody was surprised. No, <laughs> like they didn't even feel him. <laughs> no, I tell you what. I mean, for a New Year's Eve tradition right there. <laughs> wow, that's getting out of bed in the morning. That's a guy that wants a piece of the action. Go on, go on. Taylor was hit just as he let the ball go as in the direction of Dane Todd. But Groves came and put the pressure on just as he let it go. Well, you've got to, you've got to block Quentin Groves. Yeah. He's their best defensive player. He's their sack artist. He's actually what Bill Bushum said about him is he's their Jason Taylor. If you think about Jason Taylor, the Miami Dolphins, he thinks this kid could play in that type of and has that type of ability. And so you better make sure you know where he is at every play. Smith is back deep for Auburn. Dan Tishner is the wow. punter. And the ball's loose and Auburn has it. There'll be a lot of momentum changes. That was just dangerous. Yeah. Just dangerous with the ball. Especially against the team that we have talked about, the team speed. An opportunist like this look as they hook arms coming off the field after that successful turnover. Well, Dave Todd has the ball. He yeah. wants to flip it on the reverse, which by design looks like a pretty good looking play. Except there's the speed. There's the, the penetration you got from Patrick Trahanian. Tristan Davis made the recovery and Auburn has the ball quickly. First and 10 inside the 15. 7-7 seven, seven tie. Brandon Cox changing things at the line of scrimmage. Irons gets the carry, doesn't get much. Well, we've seen today that anytime there's a loose ball, I mean, whether it's off a tip pass or whether it's off a, a fake reverse on a punt, that Auburn is all over. So they've capitalized here early when Nebraska's been careless. And Nebraska was careless with that, first of all, that play call. Yeah. And the execution. Down to their own zone, Pat, 7-7. Seven, seven, unnecessary to make that kind of call. Kenny Irons back deep. Cox throws cross field, caught, but not a touchdown. Close to the end zone, but not in. Well, that's their big play receiver, Courtney Taylor, that went up for that ball, and then you saw him get flipped. And he's still down. Yeah. He fell right on the back of his tailbone. Working on Grisby, who we just saw we jump just, into to the huddle. Jumped on top of his teammates. He should have jumped like he did on top of his teammates to try to defend that pass.
Courtney Taylor makes an excellent leap and a good reception. That's a tough catch. Tonight, the Tostitos Bowl Bash continues with the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl as Boise State looks to compete and complete an undefeated season when they battle Oklahoma. Tostitos Bowl Bash continues tonight at 8 p.m. Irons trying to get it in for Auburn. Not quite. Tostitos Bowl Bash continues tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. That, that Boise State program, I mean, they're ranked ahead of Oklahoma. Who would have ever thought? Courtney Taylor looks like Boise State might have thought. Yeah, well, I'm sure they think so. Yeah. We're trying to make a statement. Big statement. Courtney Taylor looks like he's okay talking to his teammates on the sideline after that great catch and vicious hit. Stewart and Irons. Stewart. Into the end zone, second touchdown of the day for the fullback. Who is an accomplished violinist, by the way. Second time he's been in the end zone this afternoon. So you would say he's having a virtuoso I would performance say so. today? <laughs> I don't know if I would have thought of that, but well, I, I'm glad you did. I'm on my toes here today, Pat. Years. I tell you, they went up and over there. A lot yep. of guys jumping today. Getting airborne, showing some some good hops there. John Bond for the extra point to give Auburn a seven-point lead. Nebraska took the opening kickoff and drove the length of the field, looking like they own the cotton bowl. Now it's Auburn after a couple of turnovers. TNT Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is sponsored by Ford. Introducing the all-new Ford Edge. The Edge is never dull. Let's go down to Chris Savota. Well, at this beginning of the year, perhaps no better time to recognize our U.S. military men and women, and no organization does more for that group than the USO. Joining me now, the chairman of the World Board of Governors for the USO, Bill Maul. Bill, talk a little bit about your organization. Krista, this is our 65th year. Actually, January 1st starts the 66th year. We're in about 132 centers around the world, 80 in the U.S., about 50 abroad. Most people think of us with the USO tours, the entertainment tours. That's only about 20% of what we do. The Operation Phone Home. And our objective is uh, AT&T is a big sponsor of that. And we're really grateful for it. When you talk about the Operation Phone Home, how can people at, at home help with that, with the prepaid phone cards, I imagine? They are prepaid phone cards. And, you know, we get no federal money at all. It is uh, supported, the USO is supported exclusively by the generosity of the American public. We have a couple of websites uh, where you could go. USO.org is a great way to give to support the troops. And uh, there's also a, a, a website on AT&T Cotton Bowl. Uh, there's also a phone number, 1-800-USO-SHOW, uh, where people can go and give money to the USO. Thank you very much, Bill. We also want to thank the folks at AT&T who have brought 100 US Armed Forces men and women here enjoying the game, courtesy of AT&T. Nebraska just ran a reverse, which Auburn stifled for a loss of yardage. Didn't surprise anybody. Brian, I know that you made a tour with the armed forces. You yeah. went to Iraq? Yeah, I went over to uh, Kuwait and uh, Qatar and Iraq a couple of years ago with Marco Rivera. Right. The Dallas Cowboys went and visited the troops. They're all following their pro and college teams over there religiously. This is Marlon Lucky. A delayed draw. Good yardage to make up some that they lost on that reverse. And you, you know, when you watch Nebraska when they gain yards, it's, it's right at Auburn. When they try to go wide against the speed of Auburn, they seem to struggle. When they kind of go right at them, it seems like they have more success. We asked Nebraska if they've seen a team as fast as Auburn, an SEC team. They thought Oklahoma, USC, all those teams had it. 
Quick count, quick snap, incomplete. Well, they tried to catch Auburn off guard right. by just rushing that play, and I think they, they rushed it too much. Flag on the play. Matt Harrion was the intended receiver. Against Auburn. Should give Nebraska first down here. Substitution infraction. Number 97 of the defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot results in a first down. So it gives Nebraska a first down. Tommy Tuberville doesn't look as if he necessarily agrees with what the officials told him. What is that? You see the officials a nudge on the side. Well, you were you were pointing out that Nebraska got their offensive unit ready in a hurry, and Auburn wasn't ready. This is lucky. Nothing. Watch this right here. Aaron Savage <laughs> made the tackle. Excuse me, Frank. Yeah, I mean, that's Antonio Coleman there coming up and giving the, the official a little bit of a bump on the sideline. <laughs> he's, he's working with guys on the field and on the sideline. Lucky's still the tailback. Go! Passes out to him, and he's got some room. Cross into Auburn territory. Will Herring, the linebacker, made the stop, but somebody blew the coverage early. Yeah, and he had an offensive lineman, Murtha, out front here, leading away. 11-yard nice. pickup. Yeah, that's what you call running in the hip pocket right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Murtha, his uncle, Greg Murtha, was a great player at the University of Minnesota, played in the National Football League for a while from Hutchinson, Minnesota. Big fellow. Bill Callahan at the Cotton Bowl luncheon the other day thanked his wife, thanked his coaches, and then immediately thanked all the Texas high school coaches that had come and visited practice or during the week, 140 different high school coaches building that rapport that's so necessary in order to continue that lifeblood of your organization, which you is recruiting. Must have, you must have taken advantage of all opportunities to recruit. Oh, he did, especially in Texas. <laughs> Heavy competition. Flag on the play as the pass is complete. Our first down line, by the way, is brought to you by AT&T. Penalty marker on the play. Nate Swift. Nate Swift has Nebraska's touchdown. Right. Offsides Auburn. Zach Taylor's a confident kid, isn't he? Yes, he is. Anyway, he's humble. He, he knows that. Outside, he... 97. Defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat. First down. He looks at the defensive unit talking about Zach Taylor now. And there's very little over there that surprises him. Yeah. He looks very confident. He, this is the perfect system for him. I mean, he's not a. A guy that wants to go run the option. He's not going to outrun any defenders. He's not a great athlete, but he has a good mind. He's got a good delivery. He's strictly a pocket quarterback. This fits him and his talents real well. Brandon Jackson, the deep back. Fake pitch out. Pass is caught by Dane Todd on the sideline, but very little gain. Well, that's an example of a strong yep. arm. Getting hit as he was throwing it across the field. Put that ball on a line. Pass was incomplete. They must have said that Todd was out of bounds or didn't catch it cleanly. Well, you look again. A little late pressure that time. Really, Zach Taylor's had pretty good, pretty good time to throw the ball today. Brandon Jackson again as the running back. And he gets the carry. Flag on the play. That could have been a face mask or a helmet ripped off by a face mask. 
Jackson. As Brian mentioned earlier, he's got a bad hand. Tell you what, he doesn't have that's bad. He's got a set of legs oh, on that. Oh, boy, does he? I tell you, if you want to go bowling, just take one of his calves. <laughs> just take that and throw it down the lane. And that's what they look like. First foul, base man, number 42 on the defense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. A set of bowling ball calves on him, you know I mean? Just rocked. Legs. Really, you see tailbacks that carry the ball 15, 25, 25 times. Major college in the NFL. They are big, big people. They don't look like that. Has not a pair of noodles like that. <laughs> no. They don't get the job done. That's the third penalty by Auburn on this drive that's really benefited Nebraska moving the ball. Brandon Jackson again the deep back now Todd sets up in front of him big hole and Jackson will tie this game for Auburn if the extra point is good for Nebraska big hole in the middle of the line and Brandon Jackson put those calves to work yeah he did good moves in the open field and run again once again right at Auburn Not not trying to go wide on him, not trying to get around the corner, but right at him. Beautiful From hole on the left side. 20 yards out. Jordan Congdon. Well, they ran the old cross block behind Mirtha. Now this is the open field, and, and Jackson, yeah, showing that quickness in the open field. That's all, guys. Tie game, 14-14. Auburn has been able to take advantage of turnovers. Nebraska has grounded out. Brandon Jackson, who just scored from 20 yards out in the 71st Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Jake Welch set to kick it off with a little bit of a wind at his back. Patrick Lee and Davis back for Auburn. This one could be run back and will be by Lee. Excellent coverage by Nebraska as he doesn't quite make it back to the 15 yard line. And all the fans here have been able to watch these replays on this brand new scoreboard here at the Cotton Bowl, the 71st Cotton Bowl Classic. Brand new, state of the art. Can't miss anything up there. No. <laughs> that is huge. You, yeah. On television, you can't get an idea, really, of how big it is, but it is big. Like most things in the state of Texas. That's true. On first and ten. Cox changing things at the line. Back to throw it. Under pressure. Incomplete. Rodriguez, the intended receiver. That Brandon Cox, you know, you mentioned at the very beginning, Pat, it's the first time he's really been healthy all year. Had his knee twisted up against LSU early in the season. Said uh, he was gimpy most of the year. He's, he's from Alabama. Most of his family are Crimson Tide fans. He's had to deal with that. He has dealt with it well, though, I think. Oh, yeah. That's Again, a, he changes. Lawrence comes up to get the information, and he'll get the carry. Not much. Legs still churning. He picked up a couple of extra. Brandenburg made the tackle. Three or four yards, perhaps, on the game. Pat, the strength of this Auburn team, one of the strengths of the two offensive guards. Watch. Duckworth and Grubbs get out here and pull. That's like the old Green Bay sweep right yep. there. Get those guards out there and just get them clearing out some. There we go. Let's make use of the scoreboard. Thank you. Thank you for your welcome. <laughs> That's that big scoreboard we were talking about. Pressure on Cox again, and he had to get rid of it. Tommy Trott 
was the intended target, I believe. But he had no chance. Now, a quick pressure up the middle here has bothered Brandon Cox in his passing game. Good series by the Cornhuskers. 14-14 tie with 8-12 left before halftime. And the 71st cotton bowl. It's the first punt today. Cody Bliss. Grimsby. Back deep for Nebraska. He warmed up leaping on top of the huddle a minute ago. Off the side of his foot. It'll be down at the 35 where Nebraska will take over with eight minutes left to work to break this tie. 71st Cotton Bowl. And a happy new year from us. Second quarter at the Cotton Bowl, Auburn 14, Nebraska 14. And that's the offensive coordinator of Auburn, Al yep. Borges, who describes himself as a fat guy with his hair on fire. <laughs> and he was giving that offensive line a little bit of that speech just now. This is Marlon Lucky back in at tailback and loses a couple. Let's go down to Krista again. I want to bring you up to speed on kind of the mood down here on the field after Nebraska's scoring drive. The Nebraska players obviously sitting on the bench, kind of arms wide open. Brandon Jackson, after a score, said the wait is over. Meanwhile, over here, the Auburn players, much more serious, obviously. Arms crossed, very serious in their talks, discussing what they're going to do here to go into the half, hopefully with a little bit more momentum. Momentum, I think, definitely going to be the key to this game. Well, Krista, thank you. No question but that Nebraska so far has dominated. We have a tie score, but this is lucky. And a pass from Zach Taylor, but Nebraska has owned the momentum and this game so far. Auburn taking advantage of two turnovers. Yeah, I mean, Auburn has scored on a nine-yard drive and a 14-yard drive. Just an interception that got him down to the nine and then a, a, just a careless fake punt by Nebraska yep. gave him great field position. But you can see, yeah, look at the, the ball control right here in the yards. Time of possession, the whole thing, yeah. like you described, firmly in Nebraska's favor. Lucky is, again, the tailback. And Taylor back to throw it and drops it out to Lucky. Auburn defenses. This play pretty well, led by Pat Sims. Pat Sims, a big defensive tackle. Some beef in the 25, middle. They rotate, they probably rotate seven or eight defensive linemen up front. Sims, one of those guys. Good job of just trailing that play and getting Nebraska off, off the field on third down. The Auburn coaches were saying the other day, our yeah, guys play about three plays and then we give them a rest. <laughs> So they use a lot of people, as you pointed out. Titchener back to punt it again, and Smith is deep for Auburn. No tricks this time. The coverage is good, and he made a wise choice for the fair catch because the Nebraska player was looking right at him. 14-14 tie. Back at the Cotton Bowl, Auburn has the ball tied 14-14 with Nebraska. Auburn has not been able to move it so far. Kenny Irons gets the carry and doesn't get much. But I thought one of the keys today was Auburn's offensive line is basically all seniors. You know, and uh, yeah. King Dunlop, the left tackle, is the only one not a senior. And then, you know, the senior defensive front of Nebraska, led by Adam Carricker and Jay Moore, those guys right now have controlled this game. Auburn has not broken a long run. They haven't gotten a split in that defensive front. I would say Nebraska seniors up front right now controlling the game. Playing a four-man front, as they have throughout. Here's Brandon Cox again. And no place to throw and no place to go. Steve Octavian is the one that came through first and really pressured Brandon Cox. He came clean and then kind of fed him to the rest of the Wolves up front. And they make a change wholesale. Nebraska does on defense. 
the group they had in there I thought was pretty good. Yeah, they are, but it's third down. You know, this specialized age of football. Different packages for different plays. Three man front this time for Nebraska. And they rush from the outside. A big blitz, and down he goes. Cox had no place to go. Andre Jones, right, made Off that the play. corner. Yeah. The corner blitz that time. Andre Jones tied for this team lead in tackles coming in today. Andre Jones is going to be coming off the corner. And they got a tradition at Nebraska, and college football is full of tradition, that the starters on defense and the guys that play the most are called the black shirts. And they wear the black shirts in practice. And Andre is one of those. Indeed, he should be. That's a big deal to get a black shirt at Nebraska. Cox from Auburn's version. Put out of the end zone off slices off the side of his foot. Handled by Nebraska. Almost. Grimsby had Grimsby has it bounce off him. Next Monday, it's the game college football fans have been waiting for as Chris Lee and the Florida Gators take on Heisman Trophy winner Troy Smith and the Ohio State Buckeyes in the first ever Tostitos BCS National Championship game. Our coverage begins next Monday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific in high definition, only on Fox. Nebraska takes over in good shape. Brandon Jackson is the deep back. Taylor going for a bunch. Incomplete. Good coverage. Purify. Purify the intended receiver. I like the I like the play though, and I like the call. Get the ball in good field position. You go to your big tall receiver. Purify here. Goes up for the ball. Patrick Lee with him. Yeah. Good coverage. Very good coverage. Good play on the ball. Good shot, though, by Nebraska. Taking a shot down the field. Why not? Yeah. A quarterback that has an arm like that. Jackson. Not much of a hole that time. There's that Antonio Coleman. Auburn shuffles their players in just as well. Back and forth. Third down now. Different group coming on. There's a group. By himself coming off. From the spread. The heat's on, and Auburn gets their first sack of the day. Pat Sims again. Made the penetration and took down the quarterback. Well, when you spread the field from sideline to sideline with basically five wide receivers, the linemen are one on one up front. Pat Sims just beat the left guard yep. that time in the center. Came shortest route to the quarterback right up the middle. Timeout on the field here, stopping the clock with just under two minutes here in the first half. 14 14 tie. Coming up on the ATT Cotton Bowl halftime, we'll have a preview of tonight's Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on Fox, along with coverage of the Nebraska and Auburn marching bands. Plus a look back at the very first Cotton Bowl played 70 years ago today. So you know tonight that the Fiesta Bowl is at the University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale and I had a chance to do an NFL game there this year Pat That right. is a state of the art facility. I know that uh, Jerry Jones is building a new stadium here for the Dallas Cowboys. Also a state of the art facility. The art. 100,000 seats there and Cotton Bowl will be maybe one day played in that new stadium. 
Well, the city of Arlington, along with Jerry Jones, certainly made a contribution. That's where the baseball team plays as well. Texas Rangers, it's off the side of the foot. And got a Nebraska bounce. Smith fielded it and stepped out of bounds immediately. So Auburn takes over, but deep in their own territory. 14-14 score. A minute 38 left to play in the first half. That is Auburn, you know, goes to huddle up here and gets ready. Something that's just amazing to me. These kids who are playing football and taking their uh, their winter break here and getting ready for this bowl game. They've had Auburn has had 16 kids already graduate on this football team. Nebraska, 13 kids already graduate. And basically, the mentality now is you get a kid that comes in as a freshman, he never goes home. Goes home right. for a couple of days in the summer, a couple of days in the fall. Otherwise, they've got him year round in school. Irons and Stewart behind Cox. Auburn hasn't been able to do much on the ground. This is Kenny Irons. And this is his biggest run. Certainly after he changed directions, he did have one one that was longer. What a good looking play by Auburn. Auburn doesn't look like they're in a hurry here to try to make any kind of a play down the field. Less than a minute. Yeah. I'll be content to shut this down here at the end of the first half down. We're tied at 14-14. Irons and Stewart behind Cox again. Irons gets some room and Hurdles one tackler and gets an Auburn first down. Carricker finally made the tackle. Kenny Irons has picked up a little juice here. Well, that was his best run of the day. Yeah. Just showed some. 12 yard pickup. I mean, just jumps right over his own man, Stewart, the fullback who has scored Auburn's two touchdowns today. Kenny Irons is from Camden, New Jersey. Him and his brother David Irons, they moved down to Georgia a few years ago. Get out of the city close to Philadelphia. Six seconds left. This, I believe, is an official timeout. An official discussion, maybe. Reset the game clock to 26 seconds. The 25 second clock started, then stopped, and reset the game clock to 26 and the new 25 seconds. I'm not sure I understand what's happening, but you heard what he said. I think Auburn, all they want to do is run out the clock yeah. anyway. So they want to take a knee and get to the locker room and get reorganized. That's probably what they will do. They never meet a pair of nicer guys than these two head coaches. No. They have been so cooperative, not just with us, but with the committee and with everybody. They've been very gracious, very grateful to be here. And they've handled it about as well as it can be handled. Good week here for both, yeah. both programs. Irons again. And they'll head for the locker room. That's the end of the first half with the score Auburn 14, Nebraska 14. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic continues with our halftime show after these messages from your local Fox station. We'll see. Tuberville said he will. His team will play better here in the second half, and they'll get a chance here with the ball to start. He said we'll start tackling and we'll start blocking. I assume. No, that was always the fundamental. Yeah, that coaches. That when sort of works itself in, it's, doesn't it? It's kind of important ingredients. Jake Welch kickoff will be returned from the five by Davis, and room to run. Still on his feet. Excellent return for Auburn. Davis returns the kick for the Tigers. 
Corey Young made the tackle after Davis got close to midfield. Well, I think we'll I think we'll see some some of that blocking you were just talking about, Pat, as they get a pretty good wedge here to get behind. There's a broken tackle, picking up blocks down the field. Tristan Davis, a talented player in all phases of the game. Irons and Stewart, the two backs behind Cox. And Kenny Irons gets the carry on first down, breaks one tackle, another. Did most of that on his own as he Kenny crossed Irons into Nebraska territory. On the tackle for Nebraska. Kenny Irons came in as one of those heralded running backs that Auburn is known for. Right. As a Heisman Trophy candidate, but he was injured early in the season, really banged up, bad ankles. Uh, he had the turf toe injury. He's healthy now, but he doesn't look like he runs with a lot of power. You don't see him pushing Not a yet. pile. All right. Not a big guy. No. 205, 208. Cox outside near a first down yardage. You were talking about <laughs> talented players. Bo Jackson, who played, of course, at Auburn, was one of the most talented ever. In fact, I talked to Al Davis, the owner of the Oakland Raiders, one time, and he said, I don't like this to, to center out and talk about anybody being the best I've ever seen, but this guy came close, Bo Jackson. Vincent Bo Jackson, who's the best I saw? And he was? Yeah. Here's Iron. Almost breaking loose. It's first down yardage for Kenny Iron. And first the, down they just made before Iron's ball carry was the first third down conversion for Auburn today. And that won't get it done very often. Well, there's a good look of some power there. Kenny Irons running harder, running through the, the traffic in the middle, breaking a few tackles for the first down. At the Nebraska 40. Long count. Courtney Taylor dipped on the reverse. Got about four yards. Boy, Nebraska is disappointed. Watch this play here. Watch them sitting on the outside here, just waiting. Waiting for this reverse. Not just one guy, but two guys. Jay Moore waiting out there as well. They may have seen it before. <laughs> I think, you know, sometimes it, you call the play when they come out of the huddle. Look like they called that reverse coming out of the huddle. Second down. Irons. No place to go. He spins and breaks the tackle and gets a yard. And the ball is loose. And Nebraska is saying, we got it. Let's see what the officials say. Yes, sir. The Huskers have it. So often, backs will fumble when they try to gain extra yards. I don't know if he's down. This may be worth a review. Bo Rude, I think, is the guy who knocked it loose. He stripped it out. Well, I saw McEwen right. stripping that ball out. I don't right. know if the knee is down, and it looks like this may get reviewed. They review, the officials do, every play. Not the on the field officials, Auburn but is challenging the call on the field. The play will be reviewed. Well, you won't see that happen too often. So I think right here that his knee never gets down because Adam Carricker has got his arm under Irons' leg. Yeah. I don't think the knee was ever down. It, the team is allowed one challenge. If it isn't overturned. Then they get charged to timeout. But I think Carriker's arm was underneath Kenny Irons' leg, and I don't think it was ever on the ground. And McEwen stripped that ball right out. If I was Tommy Tuberville, I would challenge this play as well, just because it's in a costly part of the territory. They don't challenge college coaches, don't challenge a lot. 
but when they do they're pretty sure the Big Ten officials here yeah Todd Gearlings the referee today the side judge Michael Sheehan today 25th year uh, refereeing college football He's gonna retire after today's game sheriff of Cook County <laughs> which is Chicago yeah that's a that's some power yeah that's a real sheriff Field judge Norm Nelson, after 14 years, retiring today as well. Could be Auburn's first turnover of the day. This is not a group, by the way, if you're interested, of officials that works together on a weekly basis. This is an all-star group. The best. The best from the Big yeah, Ten. Right, right. 14-14 tie. The play stands as called. Turnover. First down, Nebraska. Auburn has charged a timeout and has used its challenge. Which means, as Bryant said, that Auburn has no more challenges. Yeah, that's where it was. Adam Carroll had his leg and wouldn't let it get to the ground. Right. In fact, Adam Carricker's arm is as big as Kenny Irons' leg. Say, it yeah, looks, I mean, it looks like a leg. It does it? look like a leg. Marlon Lucky is the tailback for Nebraska. It's the man who stripped it out. McEwen there. Corey McEwen, the linebacker. Bo Rude recovered that fumble. Nebraska first down. Auburn had it after a good kick return, and they had started to move it most effectively. Their most effective offensive series of the day so far. But they turn it over, and it's Nebraska first and ten. Go! Nate Swift. Good pickup, eight yards. We'll bring up second and two. 14 14 tie. The third quarter in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl. The 71st. Lucky and Dane Todd behind Zach Taylor. That's off the shoestrings that time by Swift. Here's Lucky. Nothing doing. Good play by the Auburn defense led by Quentin Groves. A penalty flag on the play. Flag on the play. Face mask against Auburn. Face mask. 54. Defense. Five yard penalty. Results in a first down. That's Quentin Groves, the guy who made the tackle with some assistance. First down 10 at the Nebraska 49. I didn't see the face yeah, back. I, I didn't see I, There oh, it just, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just from the ground, just reaching up and trying to pull him down. Intended for Lucky. Incomplete. Well, Aaron Savage was coming to safety for Auburn. He read that play immediately, was coming to blow it up. I think that may have had something to do with the incompletion. <laughs> I think he kind of shortened their arms a little bit. <laughs> Zach Taylor said that his practices are way harder than any of the games. And uh, just the number of plays that they run at Nebraska every day, just drilling this West Coast yeah. offense into these players. Talk about the West Coast offense. This is not. Although both teams say they run the West Coast offense, it's lucky again, and the Auburn defense reacts very well to it. Will Herring that time. But it doesn't look like what I thought of as being the West Coast offense. Right. It was developed by Bill Walsh on the West Coast when he was the head man of the 49ers. You know, the whole key to keeping this going is to get, find a quarterback like Zach Taylor, who is the Big 12 Offensive uh -huh. Player of the Year. 
We've got some candidates in school right now at Lincoln, but big shoes are going to be needed to fill. Out of the spread. Whoa, 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 flag whoa. on the play. One of the linemen pulled back too quickly. Like the left offensive tackle. Might have anticipated the count. Prior to the snap, ball start. 54 offense. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. Chris Patrick moved a little too soon. He's watching the offensive linemen in Nebraska practice and they're working on cut blocks. I mean, they did 15 straight minutes of just diving at guys' legs and throwing their body across to get the defenders down on the ground. Four man front for Auburn. Taylor drops the throw. Got some room. And he's going to take off with it. Close to a first down. Or oh, I beg your pardon. Close to the first down marker, but not the first down. That was not a great decision here by Zach. He sees this opening here. Yeah. There's too much speed in Auburn. Auburn, you know, I think they play in the, the conference with the most speed in the country. Florida, LSU, Georgia, South Carolina. They get a quarterback out in the perimeter. They're used to chasing those guys down. Kitchener back to punt again. Better kick this time. In fact, this is a dandy. Bounds into the end zone, and Trey Smith wisely stayed away from it. And Auburn will start from the 20. 57 yard punt. They bring it back to the 20, and that's where Auburn will begin. This Thursday night on Fox, don't miss till then. A new hit comedy starring Emmy winner Brad Garrett. Catch an all new episode this Thursday at 8 7 Central, right here on Fox. Go on, go. Incomplete, a flag on the play. Courtney Taylor sprinting down the sideline, covered by Andrew Shanley. And he might have got an arm on him before the ball got there. Not defensive pass interference. Yep. I didn't see him push him, but I did see his arm come out. Pass interference, number two of the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot with an automatic first down. Call against Grigsby. There's Grigsby. There's the, the mismatch. Courtney Taylor at six foot four. Oh, that's, that's a phantom call, really. I mean, Grigsby's running under his armpit. Of Courtney Taylor. That's illegal. Yeah, that, it just, that it is, it? <laughs> if it isn't, it should be. No place to hide there. 15 yard penalty, first down Auburn. Stewart and Irons. Irons is the setback deep behind Brandon Cox. Irons gets the carry, there's nothing there. <laughs> Both teams run that fake reverse. It didn't fool anybody. Well, they tried to hold the backside end there, but I'm looking down there at the linebacker for Nebraska, Bo Rude, who is a senior. Grew up right in Lincoln, Nebraska. Brother played there. Two uncles played there. Father, great-grandfather played there. This is the last in the line of the Rude family coming through Lincoln, Nebraska. Great tradition, great football family. Fox. Pass is caught across the 50 by Rodriguez. The 6'4 junior made the reception. Good throw from Brandon Cox. Yeah, he got good protection this time. 19 yard pickup. So Brandon Cox had a chance to step up that time. Last catch by Preche Rodriguez. Won the Alabama game in the last game that Auburn played. On November 18th, so it's been over six weeks. That is a good throw. Great catch and throw. And Auburn's longest play of the day, 19 yard pickup. Nebraska showing blitz, and they blitz it. Good. Wow. Courtney Taylor jumped over the top of the defender and came down with a football. 
That's a heck of a catch. Well, that's I mean, we're seeing a lot of guys jump here today, and this one was the most effective. There's Grigsby in the in the armpit again of Courtney Taylor, and he just jumped right over. Him. Maybe that's what he was looking for when he jumped on top of the huddle earlier today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was the one that was jumping over the huddle. Now guys yeah. are jumping over him. 21-yard pickup. That'll be now the longest play of the day for Auburn by two yards. Knox back to Irons, and he's got some blockers in front. Oof. And a good hit, but good yardage for Kenny Irons, nevertheless. Yeah, great hit by Tierra Green, but you yep. can see those two passes that Auburn has just uh, completed have kind of softened and loosened up this Nebraska front, allowing Irons to get to that corner. Well, Tommy Tuberville said to Krista earlier, we're going to play better in this half, and yeah. indeed they are. They really are. Watch this hit by Tierra Green, the safety. Good, good tackle. Kenny Irons deep again. On second down. Cut! Hit it for all of it. <laughs> Lee Guess was the wide receiver. I didn't see a definitive call, did you? No, and I, I didn't see the ball come out. Looked like it was one of those ties. Looked like both guys had the ball. Yeah. Today's attendance, excuse me, Brian, 66,777. 28 of the last 30 games. Well, there's the whole play again. I'm sorry to be talking. Looks like he came down inside there. Yeah. Here's Irons. Down to just shy of the 15-yard line. Let's go back and look at that play in the end zone before. Take a look at Lee Guess and Grixby, who's been in a lot of plays today. Only one foot needs to be in, of course. And I guess right there, I mean, that's... Well, like that right foot. In, yeah. yeah. You know, right foot looked like it was on the white stripe. But who's got the ball? Right. Well, now. I guess has the ball at the end. Yeah. Cox looking. Almost intercepted. Waited a little late. Barry Turner knocked it away. All of Brandon Cox's throws have been to the outside, to the sideline. Just looking at Nebraska's defense, there is there's holes in the middle of it down the field. They haven't thrown anything down the field. In the middle of the field. Really working the edges on this drive. Really, you're right. The tight ends have not been involved yeah. greatly at well, all. There, there's an area in the field there when they snap the ball that looks to be open. Perhaps they listen to you. Oh, you see this? They just moved the safety up here. They heard you. They just came. Now he's calling a timeout. Yeah. <laughs> Still 14-14 with 6.42 left in the third. But Auburn on the move. Back at the Cotton Bowl. Here's that play that they were arguing about just a minute ago. We showed you once. Here it is again. Watch who winds up with the ball when they roll over. Yeah. He guess winds up with the ball. Tommy Tuberville. You see the right foot is in. Thought this was a touchdown. And I'm inclined to agree with him. Now, Tommy Tuberville there, who doesn't have a timeout challenge left, right. thought that that should have been a touchdown. It should have at least been reviewed when he was speaking with the referee in this past timeout. Trying to figure out why that play wasn't reviewed. Well, we were talking to the officials before the game. They said, we review every play. Nevertheless, it's second and 10. Ben Tate is the Auburn running back. And Tate gets the carry. Flag on the play. Tate made it around the corner. But there was a flag dropped on the block that helped to spring him. Number 30, Terry Green, depending on the flag. It was the big right tackle, Jonathan Palmer, out there on the edge. That pulled somebody down. Holding. 
79. Offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat. Second down. By the way, a catch that they'll move Auburn back. That catch that Courtney Taylor made was a career record tying 150th reception. Ties him with Karsten Bailey. That was earlier that set up the disputed catch for the touchdown. That last hold was on Gritsby, who seems to be in a highlight package every time we show one. Yeah. From the time he jumped on the huddle today. Taylor fakes left, throws screen right, incomplete. Ben Tate, the intended receiver. The incomplete pass intended for Ben Tate. <laughs> Here's what we've been talking about. And <laughs> ever have I ever seen anything like Courtney Grisby jumping up on the shoulders of his teammates there during the team huddle. And look at all those bodies. I mean, there's got to be a hundred red shirts and helmets. And how high he got up. <laughs> just jumped right over Break the Lambeau lead. Now, they've been going at him. They've been coming at him on the perimeter running game. They've been throwing at him. Here he is at the top on this play. Third and 20. Go! Nope, out of bounds. Incomplete. Rodriguez intended. Mike Auburn's going to settle or try to settle for a field goal. The drive that looked so promising really stalled with that holding call by Palmer. John Vaughn, 19 out of 23 in his field goal attempts. This will be from 42 yards out. And that would be about his range. Plenty of leg. And good as Auburn takes the lead. Auburn 17, Nebraska 14. Six minutes, 20 seconds left to play in the third quarter. The Auburn Tigers lead by three. Auburn is a finalist for the Pontiac Game Changing Performance of the Year. The Tigers have already won a $5,000 scholarship from Pontiac for this play against Florida. Vote now at Pontiac.com slash NCAA to help decide the winner of the $100,000 Pontiac Game Changing Performance of the Year, which will be announced at the Tostitos BCS National Championship Game on Fox January the 8th. Auburn 17, Nebraska 14. Auburn about to kick off. Matt Clark. He's their kickoff specialist. Green and Lucky. Back deep for Nebraska. From the eight. Lucky. To about the 28. 17-14, Auburn. This Thursday night on Fox, don't miss Till Death. The new hit comedy starring Emmy winner Brad Garrett. And an all-new episode this Thursday at 8, 7 Central, right here on Fox. Lucky is the tailback. Lucky gets the carry. And gets about three or four. Pat Sims on the stop. Number 95, Pat Sims. Nebraska took the opening kickoff and put together a drive of beauty. Since then, the Auburn defense has figured out things and kept them pretty well in check. They've adjusted. Taylor, remarkable throw as he hits Nate Swift on the run. That's a heck of a throw. It's a great throw, Pat. I didn't know that Zach Taylor had that type of escapability. I mean, he wants to throw it early. There, he doesn't like that. Now he's being chased. 
And not only, I mean, that's the best player chasing them there yeah. for Auburn and be able to get the ball away with Quentin Groves nipping at your feet. 24-yard pickup. And obviously a Nebraska first down as they move across to the Auburn side of the field. Here's Lucky. Auburn filled the hole quickly. You've got to have that from your quarterback these days. You've got to have a guy that can, from time to time, not every play, but be able to rescue a play and, and extend the drive like that. At least step away from pressure. Sure. You think about it, the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year, a lot of, a lot of good players at that conference. Right. I thought he was the best, the most talented. Second down. Lucky again. And past the first down marker, they'll move the chain. Marlon Lucky has good patience when he runs back. I mean, whoever his his lead blockers are, whether it's his fullback or fullback this time and his guard getting out in front of him, watch him just in that hip pocket there. Just following him, just being patient, and then when he gets rid of him, then take what he gives you. 21 carries, 76 yards for Lucky. That one got eight. And Nebraska first down. This looks like the first drive of the day. Lucky again. Auburn safety man comes up and makes the hit quickly. Will Herring again. Not a safety man. He used to be a safety man. Yeah, they moved him to linebacker. Well, he was a safety his first three years. Moved him to the weak side linebacker position this year. I think I mentioned this before. That's his 49th game this today is. for Auburn. Yeah. <laughs> That's a career. Yeah, it is a career. On sort of a quick count. Batted backwards. Pat Sims got the big paws up and knocked the ball backwards. Every time they've tried to surprise Auburn with something quick, it's backfired. Yeah. They do that quite often. Yeah. Line up quickly and fire away or try to get Auburn before the defensive staff is ready. It's the, the coordinator of Auburn, yeah. Will Bushunt, probably re running his college program in the very near future. He talks and acts yes. like he's head coach material, doesn't he? He's a coach. Incomplete from Taylor. Terrence Nunn. Tonight, the Fiesta Bowl. Tomorrow, the Orange Bowl. Wednesday, the Sugar Bowl. Next Monday, the BCS National Championship game. And you don't need to go anywhere else. That's all on Fox. Oh, man. Tonight, Oklahoma and Boise State. Tomorrow I'll be in South Florida to watch the Wake Forest Demon Deacons and what a great year Jim Grobe has had against the Louisville Cardinals. You're doing the game or? Just I'm just going it? as a fan. Oh, going as a fan. You. Yeah. Jeff Brome, the quarterback of Louisville, some think might be the best quarterback in the country. Cut. They lined up in field goal formation. And then they quick kick and the ball dies at about the <laughs> one foot line. <laughs> Did that ever work? Never. I've never seen it work like that. <laughs> the ball just stopped. It, Nobody downed it. It just had that like backspin on it. It's like a, like a Tiger Woods drop right here. <laughs> Except Tiger would have gotten it closer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's Jordan Congdon with, without the helmet smiling in the background the guy who executed that remarkable kick was just with us Auburn Kenny Irons is almost out of the back of the end zone they're going to throw incomplete Courtney Taylor here's what they lined up in oh, it's a great fake it's a great fake you don't see it very often but it's a great play you're in no man's land probably too far for a field goal don't want to line up in a punt and and then you just put the, the Tiger Woods backspin yeah. on it and let it just die. Jordan Congdon who executed the kick is from San Diego. That looks like something he might have learned on the beach. <laughs> A little <laughs> like it was kicked in sand. Yeah. 
He's still smiling. Yeah. He feels Fish. good. A little bit of operating room to Courtney Taylor from Brandon Cox. <laughs> that gives him the Auburn all-time receiving record. He had 150, that's 151. I think Congen just got a record for number of high fives. I think so, too. <laughs> Look at that. everybody. He didn't have enough hands to take him on. That's when you want to make sure you don't have your helmet on. <laughs> right. Because everybody can see what you look like. Get a little national exposure there for yeah. a great quick kick. Gonna throw it again. Oof. Again, complete to Taylor, and that'll get to Auburn some more operating room. Well, that Brandon Cox got flattened that time. Did he ever? Yeah. He hung in there, though. He hung in there and uh, got rid of this ball. You're going to see him. He's getting sandwiched as he throws this football. Play action fake didn't fool anybody. Tierre Green there and Stuart Bradley right. sandwiching him pretty well. But. Auburn gets the first down and gets some operating room. They were back on the one foot lines. Irons and Stewart behind Cox. I think the punter has stopped smiling now. <laughs> Auburn got it out of that area. Put his helmet back on. <laughs> back to being a punter. Here's Kenny Irons. Tripped in the backfield. And doesn't get much. You know that Kenny Irons told us that he gets stronger as the game goes on. He just he, he runs on adrenaline. And when we sit down and talk to him, it seems like he doesn't run on adrenaline. He is right. adrenaline. Him and his brother both. They never stop talking. No, they're a year apart. His brother yeah. David Irons, the cornerback, a year older. Kenny Irons had transferred from South Carolina where wasn't given much of a chance. Taking advantage of his opportunity here, but we'll see how he does here as the game wears on. Should have been caught. Incomplete. Fullback Carl Stewart, who scored the two Auburn touchdowns, couldn't quite find the handle. Our first let down line, by the way, is brought to you by AT&T, as is the Cotton Bowl itself. Brought to you by AT&T. I see the connection between the yellow line and phone lines. Yeah. yeah. Third down. Courtney Taylor, another reception. And another Auburn first down. And a heady spin by Courtney Taylor, yeah. knowing where the defender was and turning away from him to be able to pick up the first down. Watch him turn. Outside, away from the defender. And then stiff arm him. Yeah. And get the yardage necessary to pick up a first for Auburn. <laughs> Draw play to Irons. Beg your pardon, that's Ben Tate. Irons was replaced. Before that play, Tate remember that name because that's a back of the future. Just a freshman. Second and six. Then Tate still the deep man behind Cox. The Auburn receiver, Gabe McKenzie, the tight end, worked to the tight end, but not in the middle. As yeah. Brian was talking about earlier, 12-yard gain. Excuse me. You know that Tommy Tuberville came out of the, of the locker room talking to our Chris Devota down the field, saying we're going to play better in the second half, and they have owned this third quarter. No question about it. So we're gonna play, we're gonna play football, they said. Yeah, and they look. Yeah, they have yeah. thrown the ball much better. Yeah. 
Tate. That's the end of the third quarter with the score Auburn 17, Nebraska 14. At the end of the third quarter. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is sponsored by the new AT&T, your world delivered. By FedEx, for all your shipping needs, relax, it's FedEx. And by Bud Light, refreshingly smooth Bud Light, always worth it. The Cotton Bowl is all about tradition. Fox has been a part of that tradition for a while. AT&T has been a part of it even longer, over a decade. Jose Gutierrez, congratulations on that relationship, on what has been a great week, and on the new AT&T. Thank you, Krista, and thanks to Fox for capturing this great American tradition, the AT&T Cotton Bowl. These are exciting days at AT&T. We're already known as a great communications company, but we're also a fine provider of advanced television services. So I invite all those folks that just bought those brand new fancy TVs to call AT&T. We will get them set up with the greatest high definition program. Thank you, Krista. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. Back to you. Back to you, Pat. All right, Krista and Jose. I need to be calling on those people. Yeah. You've got one of those big Brand new yeah. big screen TVs in that living room of yours? Yes, I do. I'll be on the phone. Ben Tate, the ball carrier. Tate. Rumbles. Past the 30. You said that's the future, Pat. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, he gets he it. looks pretty good, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. First time today they got the split into the secondary. 21 yard pickup. You think about the backs that have come through Auburn just a couple of years ago. Ronnie Brown and Cadillac Williams. Yeah. The second and fifth pick in the NFL draft. Bo Jackson. Steven Davis. I played with a great one. Joe Childress. There we go. A few years back. This is Kenny Irons. Yeah, he is wrapped up in the backfield. They were eat either out very late or <laughs> didn't stop at the intelligence for sure. <laughs> or they're or just, just Nebraska fans. They just haven't been to a New Year's Bowl in Nebraska in a while. Nice. Haven't been here in a long time. Kenny Irons, the deep back. Stewart in front of him. Fake to Irons. Outside to Irons. I heard that hit all the way up here. That's a long way up here. I heard it too. Andre Jones. The author of that contact. That's a good tackle. This kid, I rarely do you see a cornerback lead a team in tackles, but him and Stuart Bradley were tied at the top this year for the Cornhuskers. That's where we are on the top deck up there. Way up. <laughs> we hear the hits before we see it. Yeah. <laughs> the pressure. That's Jay Moore. Right. Both those defensive ends anticipate playing at the next level. And I, after talking with them and looking at them the other day, I have to agree. Well, that both of them at least will get the chance. Both of them lead Nebraska Red too. Cody Bliss back to punt it. Swift lets it bounce and it dies. Another effective punt. 12.44 left to play in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl, the 71st. Auburn leads by three, 17-14. Look from 
from the AT&T Skyview camera. As you see from time to time, furnishing those unique pictures of this contest between Auburn and Nebraska. Outside to Lucky. And Lucky gets near a first down. You need a Skyview camera here. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Attract the ball. Zach Taylor, I think, having a pretty good day just trying to finish a drive here. He's got about 100 plays on his wrist. He doesn't practice with that wristband on. He tries to go through practice without it, trying to memorize the volume of plays that they have in. He has it on during the game where they just call out a number and he reads the play according to the number. Memorizing those hundred is a tough task by itself. Brandon Jackson has replaced Lucky as the running back. I asked Bill Callahan how he teaches this offense that is so noted at the NFL about how difficult it is to learn. You always hear it takes three years for a quarterback to master it. He said we just we repetition, repetition, repetition. We just cram as much as we can in every day. Flag on the play after Jackson has finally stopped. He had first down yardage. But a penalty marker down. Aaron Savage made the stop. It's against Nebraska. One of the things that Tommy Tuberville said when they came out of the second half was that he had too much time and he gave them too much material. So we've simplified things, both on offense and defense, I assume he meant. And Auburn has been indeed mm -hmm. much more effective in the second half. Holding 62. Offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Excuse me, I was I was at a dinner with the Auburn coach a couple of years ago when he had that undefeated team, and I asked him how many first round draft choices he thought he had on that team, and he said five. Yeah. And indeed there were five, including Cadillac, Ronnie Brown, Jason Campbell. Jason Campbell, yeah. Carlos Rogers, yeah. Good play by the order and great anticipation. Brandon Jackson was taken down before he had a chance to maneuver at all. Watch that David Irons. David Irons. Yeah, I mean, that David Irons came in with his brother to talk to us the other day, and it looked like a vaudeville act. I mean, one yeah. guy starts a sentence, the other guy finishes it. Hey. I mean, they're just back and forth, back and forth, high, high motors, high energy. Get the feeling that those kind of guys, at the end of the holidays, you just want them to get out of the house, go back to school. Third down coming from the spread. Incomplete through the hands of the intended receiver, Terrence Nunn. David Irons, somebody asked him how he would feel after this game was over, playing his last game with his brother. He said, I'll probably cry. <laughs> yeah. And I bet he would. Titchener back to punt. And Trey Smith back deep for Auburn. Kirchner back in the end zone. Smith on the Nebraska side of the 50. Good kick. Some room. One good block. He's one more block. Got one more. Got back just shy of the 50. After all that dancing, they ran out of music. Our first down line is brought to you by AT&T. They've moved it a few times today, haven't they? Auburn in the second half, Nebraska in the first half. Looks like a tail of two halves. Yeah. It's first and ten for the Tigers at their 48 yard line. First and ten for Auburn at the 48. Bright, sunshiny day in Dallas. 
just right for football. Whatever whim there is, Auburn has at their back now. Nothing doing. Right now, let's send you down again to Chris Savota. Well, David and Kenny Irons playing in their final game in an Auburn uniform. Dad, David Sr. in the stands watching. I know it's been a long road here, a lot of injuries, a lot of schools. What are your thoughts watching them today? Well, I feel that we're blessed as a family just to be able to enjoy them uh, in this last game. You know, they've been through a lot of trials and tribulations to get here, and it's just a blessing for all of my family. We have this whole row here, this whole section, better come down and enjoy their last game. Now, with David on defense, Kenny on offense, how do you ever go to the bathroom in one we of these games? We just do it before we get, get into the stadium, and we hold out. We just man up and hold out and, you know, until the game is over. We don't move. Not even halftime, we don't go. Dedicated and loyal. A lot of irons making it to the NFL. We hope to see David and Kenny there as well. well. We all have our fingers crossed. This is my uncle Leroy Jackson. He played in the 60s with the Washington Redskins. He was the first member of our family to play in the NFL. We are glad to have all of you here. Thank you for being here and enjoy the game. And guys, something else to keep in mind. Auburn led at the end of the third quarter, 17-14. Auburn has never relinquished a lead. 10-0 when they lead after the third this season. Strong family, Krista. Strong family ties. They never go to the bathroom. That's pretty good. <laughs> Courtney Taylor, the intended receiver, he looked like he was open momentarily. But that cover two, the safety man rolled over. Well, that's a great job by Courtney Taylor that if he wasn't going to get the ball, make sure that Shanley did it. Shanley's older brother, Scott Shanley, going to the playoffs with the New Orleans Saints. Earned a first round bye with their play this year. Cody Bliss, Cody Bliss back to punt for Auburn. Going to fake it. There's nobody there. Line drive, good spiral punt over the head of Grigsby into the end zone. 55-yard kick. Tailwind, but a good kick nevertheless. And now we highlight Colt Brennan, who is a candidate for the singular All-America Player of the Year. The Hawaii quarterback threw for 4,990 yards and 53 touchdowns, leading his team to a win over Arizona State in the Hawaii Bowl. To vote for Colt Brennan or any of the other singular All-American candidates, test eight, text 87654 on your singular wireless phone or go to foxsports.com. Keyword singular for more information. Lucky back at tailback. Is going to throw it if he has time. He got a pretty good sandwich after that scramble by Josh Thompson. Josh Thompson is the nose tackle for Auburn, and he looks like your classic nose tackle, Pat. I mean, he's six foot tall, over 300 pounds, built like a square refrigerator, about as square as you can get. And uh, he just made that play coming all over the field and chasing him down. That's got, square. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little rounded. Maybe <laughs> square. You got that rifle. He's effective, that's for sure. All kinds of time. Now Zach Taylor gets away. Out of bounds. He is taken by Marcus Gunn. Chased by Taylor. <laughs> this time, Josh Taylor, he just, just gets wrestled. I mean, that's just a tag team there. That's that's the life of a nose tackle. He gets up, he doesn't stop. No. You don't want to get a loaf in your last college game. It's over there. And he gets a couple high fives out on the side. Yeah. Marlon Lucky. The lone back. Back with Zach Taylor. Out of the spread he operates. Blitz coming. Look out. Incomplete. Good coverage and a good play by Curafee is the intended receiver. Knocked away by David Irons. Well, Irons is celebrating this play. Because Zach Taylor thought he had a beat on Purify. 
David Irons left his feet and got that hand in there. David Irons just happy to be playing. He's overcome two ACL injuries. Was on crutches two years ago when Auburn won the Sugar Bowl against Virginia Tech. So Titchener is back again. Six times Nebraska's had the ball and six Go. times they've punted in a row. Fielded on the Nebraska side of the 50 this time by Smith. And that's where Auburn will take over and start this offensive position. They lead by three. Back at the 71st Cotton Bowl. What a day it's been. What a good game we've had. 17-14. Auburn leading its Auburn ball. Just at midfield. Happy New Year from all of us at Fox. Happy New Year to all of you who attended this year's Cotton Bowl. It's been a great game. Flag on the play. Up start. 79. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Jonathan Palmer, the guilty party. Matt, were you ever a big believer in New Year's resolutions? You ever? Yeah, I made, made a, I made a lot of them. Yeah. I never lived by a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a believer. Yeah. Still am. <laughs> Hard to keep some of them yeah. sometimes. Well, uh, you got to figure out what your standards are before yeah. you make them. You have to adjust them a little bit. Yeah. Ben Tate. <laughs> Still running. Stepped out of bounds or was down a knee down. Number 44, Ben Tate on Let's the Let's see how many tackles Ben Tate can can break on his way to the sideline. It's hard to break the grip of Adam Carricker, and that's what he did. I was talking to the Auburn coaches the other day. They were talking about how young Ben Tate was. When he first got there, he's just barely 16 Second years old. Down, just had turned 16. He is, as Brian and I have said earlier, the back of the future for Auburn. Kenny Irons is back in now at the tailback spot, and he gets this carry. Pitch back to Kenny Irons. The, the way the Alamo Bowl ended for Nebraska last year. Some people may have missed this in some of the highlights at the end of the year. One of those plays that looks like it never ended. You expect the band to come out anytime soon. This is one of those you see a number of times. Yeah. Somebody keeps playing it back. In this case, it's a Michigan player. And it's not over there yet either. No. No, but, you know, in this game, history and folklore can be made at any time. Brandon Cox changes formations around. Nebraska faked a blitz. Didn't have to. Barry Cryer came around the corner. Nebraska saying, we got the ball. And they do. What a break that is. Five minutes, 24 seconds left. Nebraska takes advantage. Of the Auburn turnover. Stuart Bradley made the recovery. And they created it. They created that turnover. Great instant pressure on Brandon Cox. Second turnover for Auburn. They took advantage of Nebraska turnover to score their touchdowns. Now it's Nebraska's turn. Marlon Lucky back in at tailback. They needed that. They needed that turnover. They have not been able to move the football in the second half. Lucky. It's over. Body yard. We had asked Adam Carricker and Jay Moore if they felt like Nebraska football was back and they said no because we haven't won a championship we hadn't run a big bowl game they would take 
a win in the Cotton Bowl against Auburn to feel like this program is back where it needs to be. Depends on what they do with this drive. Yeah. With this possession. Lucky. Behind Taylor. And now Todd. This is Lucky. And he gets down to where they have about a third and five coming up as Josh Thompson made the stop. Might be that four down territory right here. Pat, I mean, yeah. right now. Oh, I think so. Yeah, too far for a field goal. Might not want to punt it away. So you're calling a play right now from Bill Callahan. Kind of think that you've got two downs here to get five yards. Behind a bunch of blockers is Lucky. And he gets the first down. That was a big one. They moved the three blockers from one side to the other out in front of him. Well, they got a convoy out front. And that led them around the court. There's the, the bunch formation you're yep. talking about. Just getting as many bodies as you can, pulling the linemen. To go out with the people that were already set out there. They pulled two more people. Move the whole formation out on the perimeter. Lucky 25 hey. carries for 88 yards on the day. Taylor has taken a timeout. We'll be back to the AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet, an American revolution. Our total access game summary presented by Blockbuster. See, Auburn really hasn't done much with the football offensively. A little bit here in the third quarter. A couple of costly turnovers from the running backs. Allowed Nebraska to have a chance to get back into this game. Brandon Jackson back in his spot as the tailback. Todd moves in front of him. A couple of yards. Maybe fell for another one. Merrill Johnson led the defensive charge. 17-14. 3.20 now left to play. As the clock continues to run, Bill Callahan looks on. I think Bill has a lot of confidence in his quarterback, though. In this part of the game, this... This situation here to put the ball in his hands. Jackson. Good job defensively by Auburn. Josh Thompson again. The defense is flying to the football. Tommy got his team to seven straight bowl games. Three straight New Year's Day bowl games. That defense playing like they want to win this one. Third down. Sorry, man. It's like about eight. Time running out here. Shuttle pass that worked earlier doesn't work this time, and that might have just taken him out of field goal range. That loss was big for Auburn. Marks, the defensive tackle, made that play. They're going to talk it over. Their kick is lo kicker's longest this year has been 40 yards. This will be considerably more than that. Murtha is the injured corn husker. Two oh three left on the game clock. Auburn seventeen, Nebraska fourteen. And they're in big conference. Nebraska is over in front of their bench. Yeah. About what to do. Now the field goal will be from about 
47 48 yards should they decide to go that direction his longest is 40 only seven attempts all year long five out of seven he is they've been extremely productive when they've gotten the ball down scoring yeah. touchdowns just haven't had the opportunity to kick many think they'll try it a field goal I mean yeah, yeah I mean I think right now fourth and 11 it's a little bit against the wind they're going in a hurry whatever they're going to do right, looks like they're not a field goal out of bounds and incomplete Intended for Franz Hardy. I don't quite understand that. Well, every time they rush to play today, yep. it's backfired. And some of it is Nebraska in the execution, but a lot of it is Auburn being prepared for any kind of a quick play, a quick snap. But that was really a one receiver route and pressure in Zach Taylor's face. Auburn has one timeout left. Nebraska has two. <laughs> They'll use them quickly. 136 left. Nebraska's got to be a little bit confused by what they did on that play. I think it was the play before that you mentioned Pat, yeah. that they lost the yardage. Yeah. But they really backed themselves out of the out field, of goal, field range. goal range. Yeah. Stewart and Irons, the two setbacks behind Cox. Irons will get to carry. And Kenny Irons looked as if he might break it. And off to Kenny. But Irons. somebody hung on, Andrew Shanley. Making the stop for Nebraska, Andrew Shanley. President Gerald Ford, who passed away on Tuesday, was an outstanding athlete, a center and a linebacker for the University of Michigan from 1932 to 1934. The Wolverines were undefeated in his first two seasons there. He was born in Omaha, Nebraska on July the 14th, 1913. Great man. But I know he's a good friend of yours. I know you're leaving here today in Dallas and going to the funeral. He once told me, Byron, Byron, uh, Byron, Brian, that he was riding back. He had played in the East-West game and apparently had, had played pretty well. And on the same train with him coming back from the West Coast was Curly Lambeau, <laughs> who was already the coach of the Packers, the famed stadium named after him. And Curly tried to talk the president into playing pro football. <laughs> Offered him a princely sum of $250 a game if he would do that. And the president told him he appreciated the offer, but he said, I think I want to go to law school and maybe get into public work of some kind. $250 a game just wasn't, wasn't enough, huh? In those days, that was a lot of money. It was Kenny Irons. Came out of the pack, almost broke away. Grigsby made the stop, but the president we often talked about football. He was a diehard Michigan fan, mm -hmm. NFL fan. Anybody who played at Michigan, he kept track of in the NFL. He knew all about Tom Brady. He was just a fan. Little flags have been flying at half mask. I know he uh, he was a guest in your home. Yeah. This past year. No, not this past year. A couple of years ago. But. Uh, he and Mrs. Ford were dear, dear friends, our dear friends. Well, so, Pat, excuse me. Yeah, no, I mean, look at Bill Callahan here. He's burned his last time out. Yep. One minute to go. Auburn's got a third and two. You, you got to figure that behind that offensive line of Auburn that they'll, they'll hand it off one more time. If they get the first down, they basically can take a knee. If they don't, Nebraska will get an opportunity with the ball one more time. That's the AT&T Cotton Bowl Trophy awaiting the victor right now. It looks as if it will be Auburn. It was 14-14 at the half.
Auburn leads by three. Third and two. Nebraska showing blitz. Kenny Irons. Close to first down yardage. I don't know if he got it or not. Depends on the mark. Jay Moore made the stop. If he did, Auburn can grab that trophy, and he did. Yep. Nebraska out of timeouts. Bill Callahan, no matter if Nebraska does lose, has taken advantage, has made a lot of friends in Dallas, and has also gotten a long look at some of the players on the way up. And that's what you can say about the program. It's on its yep. way up. Yep. All of his backs and receivers will be back next year. <laughs> Don't forget tonight on Fox, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Boise State against Oklahoma. It's difficult to say, but I'm interested to see it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, Oklahoma, you saw Oklahoma here this year in the classic Red River Valley yep. contest here at the Cotton Bowl, Texas OU. Adrian Peterson getting back onto the field. Talented tailback. Been a good week for Bill Callahan and the, yeah. the Corn Huskers. And as we pointed out, or you pointed out earlier, he took advantage at the luncheon the other day to say how good and how attentive the Texas high school coaches had been. <laughs> took advantage of a little recruiting opportunity. That's part of being a head coach. That's the lifeblood. Yeah. Got to keep him coming. He thought that when he came to Nebraska, the couple of things he was looking at. They may be reviewing the spot. Here. They are. That's what they're doing. Thought one of the things that uh, a couple of things he thought about coming was the facilities. They just opened up a brand new Tom Osborne football facility on the campus. After review, we have indisputable video evidence that the runner was down short of the 40-yard line by one foot. Fourth down, Auburn. Down by one foot. There's the guy who was missed by one foot, Kenny Irons. Well, I don't know. I don't know how. To, well, I, uh, there are two lines there. Yeah. Of course, they, they can't see the yellow line. The players can. Elbows down there before he stretched that ball out across the 40 yard line. The yellow line, of course, is unofficial. The players can't see that. Nor can the people in the stands. 49 seconds. 49 seconds. Put two more seconds back on the game clock. That's what the uh, officials are saying. They've done a good job today, the official group. From the Big Ten, the Big 12. Callahan put his glasses back on. They're from the Big Ten, not the Big 12. That's the way the operation does in the bowl games. They don't come from the same conference that either of the two schools come from. Neutral officials. They've been drinking something neutral to be here with no shirts on. Antifreeze. Yeah. <laughs> Antifreeze protected himself. Yep. Or that corn cob. Time out, Auburn. Let's talk it over. If you decide to punt, there's always the danger of a punt being blocked. Sure. Or a bad snap. You never know. With 24 seconds remaining on the game clock. And they're going to go in front formation. Well, Nebraska won't even put a returner back. They're going to put all yep. 11 players up there, including Zach Taylor, the quarterback. He's in here in the middle. So he'll be in the game. Yeah. In case something does happen. Nobody back. Good. There it goes. Nobody in red even close by. Now here they come. They took as much time off as they could. Yep. Smart by 
Auburn almost like Tommy Tuberville has reviewed every situation. Ten seconds left to play. As soon as they the is the ready to go, yeah. 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 That's why Taylor stayed in there and was part of the punt block team. Although he didn't do much aggressively. So there, so there. And he spikes it. And we'll have nine seconds left. Well, you could legitimately run two plays, Pat. You can run yep. a short play, pick up a big chunk, 20, 30 yards, get to around midfield, get out of bounds, and go for a Hail Mary pass. A couple different ways to look at it. Yes. Any play, any play that's caught in bounds. If you get a first down, the clock is going to stop. Stop. Here's Taylor. Going to throw it as far as he can. Eric Block came down with it. And that's the game. Auburn, the 71st Cotton Bowl. Auburn wins by three by a field goal 42 yards in length. The only scoring in the second half. Well played game. Very well played. Nebraska took the opening kickoff and drove the length of the field, took a 7-0 lead, and looked totally in charge. Auburn adjusted, and Coach Tommy Tuberville said at the half, when Krista interviewed him, We've simplified things and we're going to play play some football in the second half and indeed they did. Yeah defensively they shut Nebraska down completely in the second half. Controlled the line of scrimmage never yep. let those backs get going lucky or Jackson 